Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I want to thank by uh, I want to start by thanking you for your leadership on this issue and for holding this hearing. Uh, I am proud to support Medicare for all and look forward to working with you to move this forward. And I also want to personally thank and recognize our frontline heroes. I see all these scrubs in the audience, and uh, I always put a smile on my face uh, because I know that uh, you all have been on the front lines in the more than two-year fight against COVID-19. I also want to say that... Uh, pandemic. Uh, we uh, have a few uh, heroes today and uh, some great witnesses, including one that happens to be a California nurse and my personal friend, Bonnie Castillo. Thank you for being here. Now, Ms. Castillo is executive director of the National Nurses uh, United and a fierce advocate for equal health care for all. And I'm proud that uh, she's here representing California as well as the workforce. Now, as we've all seen, the COVID-19 pandemic has put a spotlight on what many people of color already knew. And that's the fact that the current healthcare system does not treat everyone equally. For far too long, communities of color, patients of color, have faced discrimination in our healthcare system. And we can debate whether it's intentional or unintentional, but the facts and the data are clear. And that's one of the reasons why I believe Medicare for All is so important, because it will level the playing field for communities of color. It's simply a fact that many communities of color living in the United States have less access to health care, have worse health outcomes, and are less insured than other communities. But a significant equalizer has been Medicare. Research has shown that uh, there are substantial reductions in racial disparities in access to care and self-reported health when people reach 65. Now, this is striking and should be kept top of mind when we consider this bill. Health care should not be determined by your zip code, and no one should go bankrupt because they can't afford growing medical expenses. So I share your conviction, Mr. Chairman. It's frankly unacceptable that as the wealthiest nation in the world, we don't guarantee health care for all. Health care is a human right. And I'm looking forward to uh, taking action here. Now, turning to my questions in a couple minutes that I have left. Uh, the first is to Ms. Castillo. You know, cost is often cited as a reason to oppose Medicare for all. For those who don't believe yet, yet. But the real question I have is, cost for whom? Now, I've heard story after story from families across California about how a single illness can be financially crippling for an individual or a family. Families often go into massive debt or even bankruptcy to cover a loved one's health care costs. But it doesn't have to be this way. Health care should not be something only the wealthy can afford. No one should go into debt because of rising health care costs or an illness. One example that we're legislating separately, no one should have to ration their insulin or put off critical surgeries because of the price tag. So with that as the backdrop, Ms. Castillo is one of the leaders of the largest health care worker unions in the nation. How would Medicare for All help alleviate the racial and income disparities that you see on the ground? Well, thank you, and thank you for your leadership, um, uh, Senator Padilla. Uh, you know, for us as registered nurses, I think, you know, the key words is uh, early access prevention, uh, detection, and treatment. And that means removing those barriers, and those barriers are prohibitive, uh, whether you have, you know, for the uninsured, as has been mentioned, for the 30 million un uninsured, but for the underinsured that can't afford to use their insurance, not to mention all those who have lost their jobs and lost their insurance. Insurance doesn't equal care. And people need to be able to access that care and the care that, and we on this panel, I mean, we have the expertise 
and the education to provide that care, that's what we, that, that is our job. And we, we do our job every day. We do our job, and during the, you know, the pandemic, we didn't run away from the disaster, we ran to it. But we need the tools and we need to remove the barriers to care for everyone. And the, the you know, the um, COVID uh, does not respect any kind of uh, uh, barrier to care. It is going to, if it infects one of us, it can infect all of us. And so uh, as providers, we need to, it's, it's important uh, that we address these. I will also just, I'd like to comment on, you know, for instance, hospitals are closing all the time. We as a union fight hospital closures because, and they're deciding to close because it's not simply not profitable to operate a hospital in the lower income communities, specifically communities of color, rural uh, communities. And so if we had the global budgeting where the uh, budgeting was based on need, human need, then we would be able to uh, work to decrease those disparities that exist. Thank you, and Mr. Chair, I know my five minutes are up, but if I can, just one quick question, I promise to be brief. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has also put enormous stress on the mental health of the American people. Cases of mental illness and substance abuse disorder have sharply risen during the pandemic, and more people are seeking care. Often cost and stigma pose barriers for people seeking mental health treatment. That just shouldn't be the case. Medicare for All, I believe, can also help level the playing field for those suffering from mental illness, not just physical illness. Dr. El Said, how can Medicare for All help those suffering from mental illness and substance abuse disorder? Yeah, Senator Padilla, I really appreciate the question. Uh, we are suffering a second pandemic of mental illness in this country. And unfortunately, our healthcare system has done this thing where we basically decapitate the head from the body. We say, if it's in the head, whether it's mental health or it's dental health or it's vision or hearing, then we're gonna pay for it separately. And one of the best pieces of, uh, of, of, of Medicare for All um, and uh, the chairman's bill is that it reminds us that making Medicare whole is really the first step to extending Medicare for everybody. Covering these uh, critical needs is, is critically important. The second point here is that because we have such a different system of reimbursement for mental health, we systematically lag in terms of capacity. My own spouse is a mental health provider, she's a psychiatrist, and uh, every day she talks about caring for students um, who uh, would not have care except for that they happen to be students at the university and get it through their university. And so uh, re putting the head back on the body of healthcare uh, and making healthcare whole through Medicare for All, uh, ending the dif differentiation between the head and the body, I think is critical. Uh, and Medicare for All would do just that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.